my name is Anissa. I'm one of the ST7s in emergency medicine working up in Manchester. I'm also a member of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine Global Emergency Medicine Committee. So the Global Health Mapping Project, the idea behind it was basically that we have lots of people within emergency care in the UK um, who do global health work. We create the potential for people to start working more collaboratively um, and less in silos and probably with a bit more effect and a bit more sustainable engagement if we can start you know, focusing our efforts. So the idea of the map was born. Um, so uh, there, are, there are several aspects to what the map does. It gives everybody a window into the kind of global health work that people are doing, um, but also it creates a way, as I say, of, of, of connecting people. So it took a bit of time to get this work together. Um, we sent out a survey to um, emergency care practitioners in the UK, and we were not limiting it to members and fellows. It's anyone who works in emergency care. So we managed to get a number of the multidisciplinary team in particular um, to respond. And they sent details of the global health work that they've been involved in or are still involved in. And we have then collected this together and mapped it. It's on the Global Emergency Medicine Committee section of the website and you scroll a little bit down. There's a bit of an introduction to the map and then there's the map itself, which you can get to by clicking this link here. Just make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so at the top of the page, what you'll see is a bit of an introduction as to why we did this and how we came up with it. And also a bit of an instruction as to how to use the map. But the two main reasons for using the map one would be to actually try and find um, colleagues to connect with that have done different bits of work, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And the other would be to actually add uh, work to the map. In terms of adding work to the map, we really want more um, to be added. Now, there's a lot of points, as you can see on the map already. Um, we'll have a proper look in a second. Uh, but this is only information that's been supplied by around 90 people. And we know that there are many, many more people um, in the in UK emergency care doing global health work. Um, so if you can let people know about this, if they get in touch with us, there's instructions at the very, very top um, as to how you add the work to the map. So there's information there and we will get that added. And that will just basically, you know, make, make a richer a pool of people that people connect can connect with. Um, but as far as actually connecting with other people, so how you use the map, well, you go and have a look around and it may be that what you're looking for is a specific country that you may be interested in, let's say Ghana or Nigeria. You go and find that country and you look to see if there's somebody in the UK involved in emergency care that's actually been involved in a project. Um, in, in these countries and then when you open that up you'll be able to find a way to connect to them and we don't put their email address directly onto the screen um, but we do find ways um, of connecting you and there's an inbox that we we look after that creates that connection you don't need to worry too much about that but that's something that we're looking after in the background you may also want to approach from a different perspective. Let's say you started working in somewhere like Leeds and you're interested in global health and what you want to do is find um, colleagues in Leeds who are involved in global health in some way. So you go and find Leeds and you'll hover over that area and again, have a look um, and see what projects people are involved in and get in touch with them that way. So let's have a little look at the map itself. Um, we can actually make it bigger. We we'll click on it and make it bigger. You can see it in its full glory. Now, moving around, it's fairly straightforward. You just drag yourself around, you zoom in, zoom out, how you might do it. depends whether you're using Windows or a Mac, how you do that. Um, just to make a point about the, the actual markers on the map, the purple ones actually indicate Royal College of Emergency Medicine projects. Um, the red ones just in indicate projects that have been submitted by um, others in emergency care. Where you see the numbers, that purely means that if you zoom in, you're going to get more markers as you can see um from this you have a link here to somebody that's based in london that's doing some work in india so if you want to connect with them or you want to find out where they work in london you click on number 228 which is their marker in london and that will take you um to this person now it doesn't as i say it doesn't name the person but because you know the number of their project you can connect back to them so if you want to go back to the project in india so there's 205 which is a different one um, if you want to go back to them in London again, 228, you're back there. If you want to go to that other project in India, you click on 206, and that's the other project. So you can keep toggling between them. And in that way, you know that you've got the correct um, number. 
and you can get in touch with us and, and, and link to that particular code. Now, our job um, is when we when people get in touch with us, following those instructions that I showed you on the previous page, um, we then link people up. The only thing that might change about the map in terms of, or in the immediate term, is that some of these markers that are red um, or purple, and they're probably not the purple ones, but the red ones might turn gray all that means is that this is a legacy project so that this work was done by somebody, they've inputted it onto the map. Um, if the marker goes great, it just simply means that we're unable to get in touch with that person um, anymore, but at least we've left the information there so you get an, an idea of the breadth of the work that people have, have been involved in. Okay, um, I think that's probably everything you need to know. I would just encourage you to have a look at the map, um, have a play around with it. Please, really importantly, share this with colleagues especially obviously those colleagues that are interested in global health and want to get in touch with the people, but also um, those colleagues who have work and you know that they've got work that they could contribute to this map. Um, it's really, really important that people are able to connect with each other. It's really important from the perspective of mentorship. Some research that I've been involved in recently, one of the big things that came out as a barrier to people's engagement in global health was being able to access that mentorship and support and we know that there are mentors all over our emergency care um family if you like in the uk and we could really really do some excellent work together if we're able to connect this work would not have been possible without um all the hard work of Claire Crichton um, Iannone, who has worked with myself and bringing this to life there's been lots of others who've been involved along the way but she has put an enormous amount of effort into this and it's quite exciting to see it in its existence.